Back in 2004, my guest was awarded a Walkley Award for her reports into the compromised Gold Coast City Council election then. Alice Gorman is her name. She's an edit, uh, She's a journalist of nearly a quarter of a century's experience, or a quarter of a century's experience. And she was being guided or helped or set free by the then editor of the paper, Bob Gordon. And at that time, Mr Gordon um, copped a few phone calls, angry emails and more. That was a newspaper doing what a newspaper should. Well, as you're about to hear, Alice Gorman has made a plea for journalism and support for newspapers with a very personal tale. Alice, welcome back into the studio. Hi, Steve. Take me back to 2004 when you won your Walkley Award for Journalism. Exactly what was the story? So at that time, I was the um, full-time council uh, correspondent for the Gold Coast Bulletin. Um, And just pre the 04 election, we got wind that there was... um, a pot of funding there that had been put in by um, prominent business people on the Gold Coast to support candidates, like-minded candidates, was the terminology. You often hear that phrase come up. (laughs) Yes, indeed, (laughs) indeed. Um, And and it was purely to support them in their their, um, running for that election. So suddenly um, mum and dad candidates from the suburbs um, didn't have sort of, you know, hastily photocopied uh, election material. They had these amazing glossy um, brochures that would have cost, you know, a lot of money being letterbox dropped to every single resident in the area. Um, We were being sent them um, and we started asking some questions and it was quite difficult to get a straight answer as to what was going on. Um, How surprising for local government. (laughs) (laughs) Indeed, indeed. Um, On the the coast, yes. And then sort of literally, I think it was like three days before the election um, uh, a property developer who had actually um, contributed came clean and said, yeah, look, this is what we're doing. I don't see any reason to hide it. Um, we just think that the standard of, of candidates on the Gold Coast needs to lift and I think if we can have, he called it a collegiate um, sort of approach um, to council, um, if we can achieve that, then we're going to get better decisions for the city and that's got to be good for everyone. Um and then all this ducking and weaving happened and people who'd been involved in behind the scenes, you know, started, you know, rewriting what mm. had happened. And, and, you know, from there, it, you know, we ran a story, we ran stories and um, the election went ahead and then there was a C investigation, which basically made some recommendations for the changing of, of the Act and... and Sort of what? So the Crime and Corruption Commission had a look at it and said, did. "We have to change this. This is but not right." Yeah. Basically, it was it was more around as right voters, we have a right to know this Who's person. Who's funding? Who? Are you actually independent, or are you being supported by a pot of money in the background? And there's nothing. I, I, you know, I don't think anyone questions the need for funding to run for election, but I think that at the very least, as a as a voter, we deserve to know. Actually, on, who's funding? On, yeah, who's funding? That's <laughs> and why? right. And yeah. are you independent, or are yes. you part of a you know an unofficial you know alliance of people? And what if you are? What do you stand for? You know, mm. this was in two thousand and four on the Gold Coast. It's it's a familiar Gold Coast story, Alice. Correct. In many ways, isn't it? Yes. Um, and your editor at the time, Bob Gordon, I believe, was under a fair bit of pressure from external sources. You know, it's often like you see in the movies, people pick up the phone and start screaming and yelling at the editor, saying, "I'm going to pull ads. I'm going to mm. do this. I'm going to do that." You know. Tell me what was going on for the editor. Yeah, look, to Bob's credit, I didn't discover a lot of that until after the fact. And it's purely, I was just, if you do a Google search, a lot of it comes up in the the evidence that was presented to the C, And it was emails and it was letters and um, saying, you know, this is outrageous. This isn't good for the image of the Gold Coast. What are you doing? You should stop her, um, you know. And and Bob, to his credit, didn't let me know a lot of that stuff at the time, and just you know said keep writing, keep keep. So your editor, I mean, he said he's doing what um, Ben Bradley famously did for the Watergate guys. He he helped keep the pressure off you and let you get on with your job. Yeah, very much so. And and I guess you know times were very different. Um, the paper had had a, a more powerful business model, so you know there was a very distinct line between advertising and editorial, um, and that gave um, the newsroom a lot more power to go out and, you know, report the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. What journalists are supposed to do. Correct, yes. Um, Respect for truth and the public's right to know, the first line of the journalist's code of ethics. That's right, yeah, Yeah. and and to ask questions no matter who you're asking the question of or what their relationship is with the business department of of the newspaper. You quit 
I mean, you're an experienced local government reporter on the Gold Coast Bulletin. You've been writing a column of recent years and you quit or were told thanks but no thanks anymore recently, Alice Gorman. What, what happened? So, look, um, shortly after um, the 04 election, I went to a part-time position. I married a vegetable farmer. I moved um, into the scenic room, you which is a neighbouring. I did. You I married did. a farmer. For, for better or for worse. And, um, and look, right from that point, I, you know, I had, I had kids and, and I always dabbled still with the bully, um, you know, for various editors that came after Bob. I'd write columns, um, I'd write features. Um, and the most recent iteration of that was just as a weekly contributor of a column um, that could cover anything and everything and I'd often just keep track of um, what the what the you know popular topics were and and you know delve into them and and say well this is my take on it these are the questions I've got about it and that's what I did with great freedom and the columns were always very well received and there was comments on them and shares and all of those things the metrics that we use these days mm -hmm. you know they were popular now you didn't quit but you received an email from the current editor of the paper I think and said Thanks very much. Goodbye. Yeah, so just under two weeks ago, I received an email to say, look, I'm really sorry to tell you that um, the next two columns are going to have to be the last um, financial reasons. Um, you know, thanks for everything and feel free to, you know, contribute some ideas from time to time if you'd like. So you were sacked by email after a quarter of a century, Alice. Yeah, that, that, that's kind of the way it looks. Um, I, uh, that's probably what surprised me the most. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a realist. I get that financial times are, are tough. That said, I think I am the only columnist in the, in the, on the roster that has been let go. Um, not even phoned or spoken to personally, uh, no, just via email. Correct, yeah. And look, I, I took my time. I took about five days and I responded and said, look, this is how I feel about this situation. Um, and I've yet to hear anything back. Okay. Now you made an impassioned plea for the future of journalism in Australia. And it was against the backdrop of your last column for the paper. So I want to give you a chance to, to tell the story um, uh of what's occurring on the Gold Coast at the moment when it comes to development and local government. Okay. Um, so uh, October last year, we had a really sudden change of editorship. Um, I, I don't work in the office day to day, so I'm not sure what was said to the staff at the time, but I've certainly been told by people from outside of um, the industry, uh, people in the business community, that um, a delegation of, of people um, met with, with News Limited um, senior management and said, we don't like the direction of the paper. We don't like the tone. We need more positive. Um, we need more positive coverage of the Gold Coast and and boost the Gold Coast image. Um, and we'd like a change in the in the sort of staffing at the senior levels. Um, whether or not that happened, I'm not sure. That's certainly what I've heard from numerous sources. Um, you wrote a column on the architectural merit and high-rise design of a contentious main beach development, didn't you? I did. So shortly after that, I, I filed a column. Uh, Tommy Campion, who's a very well-known photographer at the Gold Coast, took a photo of a, a building at Main Beach that's been developed by Katie Page, the wife of um, Jerry Harvey. From Harvey and, Norman. Uh, correct. Mm -hmm. um, put that on his Facebook um, page and it generated huge comment and it was all around you know so this is designed by this amazing architect out of Sydney who's very well recognized and the comments were I don't like that that looks like housing commission you know how ugly is that all of this commentary and Often at the moment when a development comes to council, one of the reasons for allowing something to happen that's not in line with the planning scheme is it's got great architectural merit. So I sort of wrote a column about, well, you know, what, what beauty is in the eye of the beholder? What does architectural merit mean? How far should it allow pe developers to, to, you know, how much leniency should it allow developers? So a normal discussion about local government development, Absolutely. property developers. Really innocuous. Aesthetics. Yeah. You know, whether well, this is in, in keeping with the style and tone of the Gold Coast, you know. That's right. Um, mm. the, 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 the development had some contentious background in that um, Katie had to go to court to get it approved because it was higher than the allowed three-storey limit on the site. Um, so I didn't really have an opinion one way or the other whether it was an attractive building or it wasn't. I was just mm. sort of, you know, delved into the conversation um, and that column didn't run. Um, and, you know, from time to time, I guess if tight, space is tight, that might happen. So I waited for the next week, didn't run. I said, oh, are you planning to run that column or do I need to write a new one? And I got the instruction, oh, you better write a new one. So I did. Um, 
so that you know. So your column, I think, questioned the financials of the development as well, didn't it? At one point, am I, or am I misreading? No, no. I, uh, okay. I don't think so. No, okay. it was more just around you know uh, this argument of, of architectural merit. Should okay. that be held higher than what the actual planning scheme allows a developer to do? So did you write another column? I did. And it got published. Um, from memory, yes, yes. Okay. Now, you were attacked then by the mayor of the Gold Coast, Tom Tate. Now, you've worked with multiple mayors have. and councillors over the years. They all know who you are. They've all had run-ins with you at different times. But this one was rather... This was really personal. Um, personal So, attack. it was literally days after our editor had changed um, and we were in between editors. Um, and and it basically questioned a, a column I'd written about the very contentious cruise ship proposal that's down happening down at the coast. Um, and it basically basically called me an outsider and said, you know, here's a woman that doesn't even deign to live in our city. She lives 40 kilometres away in Canungra, which I don't, um, you know, where she's on the farm with her husband, this really patronising sort of line. Um, you know, if she can't even bring herself to live in the city, why should she have an opinion? She's not an engineer. She's not a financial expert. What are her qualifications to ask these questions? A you quarter know, of a century of reporting on Well, perhaps? exactly. You know, <laughs> I, I pay rates, numerous <laughs> sets of rates, which are going up um, on the Gold Coast. You know, I've, I've got parents who live there we have business so you've irritated powerful people on the gold coast i think so and i've i think the issue is that in the past mayors take it on the chin they go you know what the journalists asking the questions i'm in a position of uh, public office i i'm paid by the public i've got to answer those questions yes um Tom takes a bit of a different view in so much as he takes seems to take it all quite personally and subsequently responds not just to me on his Facebook page but to residents asking. There was a an 18-year-old girl that asked a really eloquent, polite question of a decision to put potentially put a light rail track through the middle of Main Beach. And um, the mayor's response was gobsmacking. It was so rude and, and just petulant, really, and... And that girl responded with great gusto and gave back just as good. And and I was just like, how has it got to this? You actually have written in your piece that Australian journalism is in crisis and that this has implications for all of us. So you've been let go, as they say. You've been told you can seek opportunities elsewhere, as the euphemism goes, because, uh, and, and I'm assuming it's because you're upsetting people on the Gold Coast for your fairly innocuous columns, as you put it. Uh, I, you can only assume that. I haven't actually been given a real reason as to why I've, uh, you know, my, my columns aren't running anymore. I mean, So the business uh, model of the paper the is under threat? Is, absolutely. The business model is under threat. Anyone that works Like it within, is anywhere for absolutely. traditional newspapers. So anyone that works in traditional news, news knows this. Um, I'm in a powerful position in that I don't actually rely on journalism for my income anymore. So mm. I angsted over this and I thought, you know what, someone needs to say this because um, often you'll read comments going, oh, that, you know, annoying news organisation, I've got to pay to read that story. My list is say, bloody Murdoch. You yeah. know, it's a Murdoch publication, Steve. Why do you talk to these people anyhow? So give me the uh, no, answer well, for that. Look, and uh, I guess, look, until probably October last year, I could honestly, hand on heart, say I've never been told to write something in a certain way, you know, for all those years of working. I've worked for the Sunday Telly, I've worked for the Sunday mail um never been told you must write this this in this certain way that seems to have changed um and i can only assume it's due to financial reasons i i can only speak personally i don't know about any other journals in the organization as to whether they can or can't but certainly the response i've had on that facebook feed is from other journalists within the organization who are all quite shocked that the way things are going on the coast so why is what what does the you know, the people who buy and read newspapers need to know? I mean, you want them to still do it. Oh, absolutely! You, you, I love. you want them to buy newspapers. You want them to read. You want them to question. You want them to challenge. Uh, but you're worried that this is really in trouble. That this this traditional news model is really in trouble, and it means that powerful people just get unchallenged. Um, well, they can self-publish. They can so so. The mayor's post was sponsored, which means he paid Facebook some money, or we did as ratepayers. I'm not sure. Facebook some money to to show it to other people on the Gold Coast. They were, it was highly targeted, um, and and at the at the um, detriment of mainstream news. So mainstream news invests money to send journalists out and ask questions, and photographers to take photographs, and people in the office to lay that out and put headlines on, and and print a newspaper or publish a website. And it's journalists have a code of ethics that they um, live by, um, and you know without them, there's no checks and balances. And I think, as a society, I really worry that people don't value that service that mainstream media 
gives them and they don't aren't willing to pay for it. Um, you know, it's like going into a fruit shop and just taking an apple off the shelf and not paying for it. Um, you, you wouldn't do it. So why do we have it in our minds that journalism should come free to us um, and that we shouldn't support it financially? Uh, we pay for music streaming, we pay for movie streaming. Why not media? There's just this sort of barrier there that people don't seem to think it's worth doing. You no longer live on the Gold Coast, nor do you live in Canungra. You live in the scenic rim, uh, working a vegetable farm. You're still going to write occasional pieces. But what do listeners on the Gold Coast in particular need to think about when it comes to local government and development that's occurring there? I think they have to speak up, and, and so many do, but it's sort of where that voice can be heard. And um, I think the future of a strong newspaper in that city is to give voice to the whole of the community, not just to a section of the community. Because at the end of the day, if all the paper runs is positive, you know, fluff pieces, why would anyone continue to buy it? You know, they're sort of undermining their own business model. You know, if it's not the go-to source of news and record of everything that's happening on the city, warts and all... Why buy the paper? Are you still going to write? I mean, you're a journo who's got a Walkley Award. You've got a quarter of a century's experience. Are you still going to write columns for anyone? Uh, look, I, I'm just considering what I do next. I have a lot of work within our business, which is growing at a rate of knots. Um, so that takes up a lot of my time. But certainly, you know, everyone who's close to me is is saying, you need to keep writing. And I love writing and I are love telling people. Con- are they cause for concern as to what's going on with development on the Gold Coast? Look, certainly the scale of developments that are being approved that are in contravention to the town plan worries me. The relaxations that are being given to density, to parking um, on site, um, to contributions, things like that definitely I would think should be raising some alarm bells. Um, You know, there's business is tough down there. There's a lot of empty shops. Um, you the cost of doing business down there, um, the light rail is very contentious. It's you know mm. f- for where it goes to next. Um, the cruise ship terminal is a massive one. Um, you know there's a lot of money being spent investigating its viability of putting it out in the middle of a very very rough piece of ocean off what is beautiful public open space, which is a really, you know, mm. rare commodity on the Gold Coast. Yes. Um, the ASF um, development down at the spit um, and the sort of questions around, you know, well, what's ASF's, you know, background? What's its ability to, to undertake a development of this size and scale? Um, do we want another casino on the Gold Coast? There are questions there that need to be asked and residents have a right to have all of the news around those issues. Best of luck for the future. I hope you'll keep digging and annoying people, particularly the powers that be. Thanks, Steve. Alice Gorman. Hi, Philip Clark here. Let's be honest, it's all of you.